Hello everyone and welcome back. It's been a very long time since I've done a build based around the Solar Titans, and a lot of that is due to what people are interested from my findings. So we are going to be covering a few of these builds and see where the next tide takes us. So for today, we'll be covering the Ashen Wake and Dragon's Breath combo which is highly slept on with how powerful it is for one player alone. By using the build, you can get near instant grenades back via Scorcher conditions, high solar damage that steadily increases, Ease of customization for both newer and older players, and lastly, a aggressive playstyle for those who enjoy running content fast and efficiently. It's straight to the point and easy to use, which I like for a number of builds. So, here's how we're going to go about it. To start, you're going to want to have Soul Invictus, where Solar Ability Thunder Blows creates sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster and Super Drains more slower while in it. Then you want to have Roaring Flames where final blows with solar abilities increase the damage of your solar abilities. Roaring Flames will play a pivotal role in how the build will work over time since the mods and fragments being used will help regenerate our grenade energy and thus improve our damage with RF over time. Looking into the fragments, Ember of Eruption where solar ignitions have increased area of effect, Ember of Blistering where defeating targets with solar ignitions grant grenade energy, Ember of Sharp, where your solar ignition spreads scorch to others, and Ember of Ashes, where you apply more scorch stacks to targets. As we are using fusion grenades solely with the build, our grenades will be able to deal a hefty amount of damage in one full hit, while at the same time dealing continuous damage via a scorch or ignition's attack. Having blistering will greatly benefit the build, since activating ignitions on the go will be very easy to pull off with our key items in hand. A lot of these effects will be most active once Dragon's Breath is activated, although using Solar Grenade can also trigger them depending on the enemy type we face. At best, a lot of these effects will allow our build to gradually regen chunks of our grenades as long as we meet the right requirements to do so, and from here allow us to spam them as we see fit. For the mods and stats, both Resilience and Discipline will have a huge advantage over the given stats we have chosen this time round. Our resilient stat is at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction against enemy groups, and this here will be a must have for surviving one shot hits. And not much mods or fragments are needed to support this area further, as the following can just make do. However, with Solar Victor's aspect available, we can use that aspect to quickly garner restoration if in dire need. Now, outside of that, you can add on the Harmonic Resistance mod as well if you desire to, but it's not required. Our Discipline is at tier 10 which will grant us a 37 second cooldown using our fusion grenades. I've gone over the top with the stat by accident, so if you do end up in my position as well, I would invest the left of the stat to our strength stat instead since that will be used here and there as well. Since our charge rate is already quite high and requires not much additional mods to help it, applying a few extra things as backup can help if things do go wrong, which it will. Outside of Ember Blistering, we are also using the grenade kickstart times 2 Charged Up times 2 and Absolution and Bomber mods as well. With Charged Up, we will have 5 charges overall and 2 kickstart mods as well, which will all change up how the build works. Having such charges will allow us to get between 16 to 45% energy grenade regen back depending on how many we retain and use over time. The rest of the mods will be granting us a 5 to 10% extra on the grenade side of things, but this overall will help the build in a small amount if we desperately need that small boost quickly. I would say it's not overall needed with how well set up the build is, but it's nice to have either way. In this section, we'll be covering armor charges and additional mods. Charged up times 2 will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and collect, while stacks and stacks will increase our charges collected by 2. Next, adding the Solar Siphon, a firepower mod, and then the powerful attraction mod will make it easier to collect and create orbs of power around us. Lastly, having Ashes the Assets is a must for the build, and I have left the Time Dilation mod as a reminder to players to try and use the Solar Surge mods as well for the build, if you feel that the grenade regen is really good. For weapons, we have Zalo's Bane with Incandescent and Ensemble, and this is a fantastic weapon to use for a wide number of reasonings. The main reason you want this weapon is because of its origin trait that will increase your weapon's ammo size depending on how many people are in your group. This here will allow weapons to fire for longer, and when combined with Incandescent, allows us to proc certain Scorch and Conditions effect for much more longer. The only downside to the weapon is that it's a raid weapon exclusive, 
but there is an even better option available that players can use instead. The Apocho integration hand cannon can be gotten from doing a small quest that won't take too long to do, but the reward for it will give you a smooth firing hand cannon that will be great against all types of enemies you face. For Heavy, we are running the Dragon's Breath rocket launcher, which is a very powerful and extremely useful exotic when combined with what we are running. The firepower alone from the weapon is something worth investing in already since its damage is slowly escalating over the given time it has. So combining this with Ashen Wake and the fragments that grant grenade energy back via ignitions will allow the build to dominate even harder content over the given period and time. It seems to me that Ashen Wake, although very basic in its exotic uniqueness, is actually one of the best grenade based exotics if you're after something that hits hard and goes straight to the point. Fusion grenades are already quite powerful in their base forms, with warlocks being able to spam them with certain exotics and aspects with fast efficiency, and now titans being able to do the same as well with much higher benefits included. It seems that with its sheer firepower being capable of taking out even the hardest enemies in GMs, you would see the exotic be used more often, which sadly is not the case. This might be due to players wanting exotics that cover a number of roles within the build itself, or they see the use of grenade based builds being too common nowadays and want to try something more different. However you look at it, the build is customizable to be different than its predecessors and actually fits the role of an aggressive playstyle for those who want to burn through content very fast and efficiently. Now, accompanying the build I have Dragon's Breath attached as I don't want to use my grenades solely for bosses. No. What I want to do is use these two in conjunction with each other so I can build up damage against mini bosses and bosses alike in one fell swoop. This will work out really well with the grenade aspect of the build, since not only do I have the mods to back the grenade regen process as well, but having the following fragments such as Ember Blistering will give us a huge chunk of energy back via Ignition's Blast. A Dragon's Breath is guaranteed to net Ignition's Blast upon the hits, which means we can use our grenades back to back and also benefit from Ash's Way's secondary effect of also granting us more grenade energy upon direct kills. Having such a heavy hitting build goes as well as you would think. I can completely dominate a wide number of GMs, dungeons and additional activities that most players are not used to. It excels the most when being used against champions for example as a raw and flames buff where the grenade will take off at least 1 to 2 thirds of a mini boss health, which all depends on the level of flame active. It's such a destructive setup that there is one caveat to the build you need to be aware of, and that is where you throw the grenade. If you throw the grenade up close to the enemy and it connects, there is a 100% chance you will die from the explosive feedback being produced. A safe distance is required while at the same time throw on the ground will dispute the damage done, but it will still damage user overall. The overall effectiveness of the build allows players to pretty much destroy enemies in a fast paced manner while leaning more heavier into the two sort of combos in hand. I can see this being useful in all sorts of content since the damage is surprisingly good and if you're new to build crafting and you want something quite simple such as this, then you can easily pick this up and go to town with it as you see fit. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.